Hello everybody, Von Rich here with five underrated guitars. There are so many. Now, one that came to mind immediately for me is Bob Weir, the rhythm guitarist of Grateful Dead. He's right there, I don't know if you can see him that well, it's not a great picture. This is a pretty, this is their most psychedelic album probably, and one of my favorites. Although I do like their uh, debut and the one that came out after this. But anyways, when people think of great guitar players, they're always thinking of these noodling guitar solos and uh, I think, and which I like, I mean, I, I would say Hendrix is probably my favorite guitarist. I don't know if he's the best, I think he is, but I'm not a guitarist. But uh. I think the rhythm guitar is very underrated and a lot of times it's a lot more memorable and uh, he, he's great he plays these uh, jazz riffs almost you know in in these jams and he does do an occasional lead. another one that came to mind these are my honorable mentions is uh, Martin Barr I guess is how you pronounce his name it's B-A-R-R-E I believe and he was the guitarist for uh, Jet Toll. This is a Living in the Past, a double album. It came in this kind of book thing. And there's some pictures of Martin Barr. So those are my uh, honorable mentions. Now I decided to go down a genre that's even, it's underrated genre in my opinion. Just ask PB Fall. <clears throat> and my fifth best underrated guitarist is Greg Hetson from the Circle Jerks. He's right there. This is their second album. I, I think this is better than their debut. Um, now he's kind of like, he's not a, a, a lead guitarist at all. He is in the vein of a, I would say he's like the Keith Richards of punk rock. He's written so many great riffs. I mean, I if I had to pick uh, five best guitarists, I would have to include Keith Richards, you know. And he's not a great ripper, or, you know. This is a wonderful, a fantastic album. This is a, a rock album. And there he is right there, shredding. Greg Hetson. And finally, I'm going to show Gig, a live album. There was a, a thread going around on show some great live albums, and I was thinking about doing it, and I would have shown this. This is a fantastic live album. You got 11 songs on each side, and it's just these great catchy riffs, one after another. Um, I saw the Circle Jerks many times live, and every time I saw them, they blew everybody else away, regardless if they were the headliner or one of the, one of the opening bands. They were just fantastic. Number four, the fourth best underrated guitarist in the history of music is Poison Ivy. Here's a good shot of her right there. Fantastic guitar player. Now, I remember the first time hearing uh, the cramps, and I, I wasn't really that impressed until I saw them live, and it's like, holy mackerel! And uh, it was Brian Gregory, I think is his name, whatever the the other guitar player. He did this solo, I think it was on song TV set, and it was just like this feedback. It was like I'd never seen anything like it before, but. Uh, Poison Ivy, man, with her riffs, really good rock riffs, some uh, like surf guitar riffs even, you know? Just a fantastic guitar player. And here's a, a bootleg of them, a Palo Alto, very good bootleg. And here she is right there, ripping on the guitar. And I thought I would show one more bootleg. This is Hanky Panky. And this is a picture of her in the later days, you know? Um, 
Lux Interior died and broke up the band. She's still around. You don't hear much about her though, but yeah. Fantastic. The third best. Underrated guitarist in the history of music. I'm gonna have to go with Rick Agnew. This is a fantastic album. All by myself. And literally, he plays every instrument on this album. Just a great, he's a great guitarist and obviously he's a, a pretty good musician in order to pull this off. But uh, he was the guitarist for this band that produced one of the, one of the best punk albums in the history of punk. And he's right there, Rick Agnew, a very young Rick Agnew. Fantastic album, great riffs. But I think the main reason he's included is because of this album, Christian Death. His guitar playing on this is like nothing else, man. And there he is right there. It's just fantastic guitar playing, man. Now, we got two left. <laughs> I gotta think about it while the cows are mooing in the background. Number two. I'm gonna go with Steve Albini or Albini from Big Black. He's been in other bands after Big Black. He doesn't, I don't think he plays anymore. He just produces bands like Nirvana and PJ Harvey and stuff, you know? But uh, yeah, this is, a, I picked this one, this album, because this is, a, they don't have pictures of themselves on the album covers. This is a picture of him right there. This is the Hammer Party by Big Black. And what this album is, is their first two EPs put on one album, you know. The first EP is side one, the second uh, EP is side two. And uh, this is a lot different than, well actually every album of theirs is different. They kind of build and... It's a very interesting guitar sound. This is uh, Racer X. Came out in 84, 85. I think it was 84. Um, now, Steve Albini, he plays with a metal guitar picks. And I've heard some people say, man, it just grates on me. I can't handle it. But uh, yeah, I think it's great. And it's got this, the guitar picks give it this really metallic sound. And this is a live album by Big Black. Uh, Pig Pile, is it? Fantastic live album. Now, the number one, the number one greatest underrated guitarist in the history of music. It's got to be Paul Leary, man, of the Butthole Surfers. The beginning, I don't know if you could hear the music. It was a little bit of this album. Locust Borsch and Technician. He's a fantastic guitar player. There's another album by theirs. This album's got a weird name. <clears throat> Psychic, Powerless, Another Man's Sack. Now, the Butthole Surfers were one of the craziest bands I've ever seen in concert. And <clears throat> his guitar playing is, let's just say he, he could have been a, in a 60s psychedelic band. He would have fit right in, man, with his guitar playing. Here's a picture of him right there. Paul Leary. This is another band that doesn't really put pictures of themselves. But yeah, this is a great song, great album. But yeah, Paul Leary, man, great leads, great riffs. This is a hairway to Steven. And I guess he's part of that mug. <clears throat> and maybe their best album. It's a little more commercial than those ones. So this would be, this is a good jumping on point, I think, for people that aren't familiar with uh the Butthole Surfers. This is Independent Worm Saloon. And uh, 
It's the dude from uh, Led Zeppelin. Produced this album. The bass player. What's his name? Ah, whatever. Fantastic album this is, man. You got Dancing Fool. That should have been a hit. Who was in my room last night? That, I think, was the single. You got Goofy's Concern. Chewing George Lucas's chocolate. But anyways, the best guitar player. Underrated guitar player is this guy right here. Paul Leary. Take care, everybody.